Hi guys, I'm David and this is Jeanette. Together we are Low Range 4x4 Adventures. For the last few years we have been doing some epic trips to amazing locations across Australia. Subscribe and like our videos and hit the notification bell to join us on our adventures. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we've got the bonnet up on the Colorado, but it's not a bad thing today. We're actually going to do a little upgrade. Uh, those of you with um, Colorados may be aware that the air box has a weak point. Um, these mounts often fail, and you can't actually bolt the bolt back into the top of it, and this can allow water to get into your engine. So. We've done a little bit of research and Dave has found a replacement because uh, we just cannot get a Holden air box. And to be honest, this is the third time this has happened and we're a little bit over it. <laughs> so guys, um, what I did, I did a fair bit of research. There's a few manufacturers on the, mar on the market that do aftermarket air boxes for all sorts of manner of four drives and other vehicles. Uh, I checked out a few places and we settled on Psycho Performance from Bundaberg. So these guys do custom air boxes for all sorts of four-wheel drives. They do snorkels, they do a whole heap of gear for performance upgrades for four-wheel drives. So we've chosen their air box. They do a special high flow filter that they actually make themselves, um, which is beneficial, better airflow, better fuel economy things like that so and also you can see the filter all the time because you, it's got a perspex top so you can see if it's clean you can see if there's anything in the air box which is really good so and it's a fully sealed system so you don't have any chance of water air anything like that so don't have any chance of water um, dust etc getting in where it's not supposed to get in so we're going to use their air box. So we've got that here. Um, I haven't opened it yet. It's been sitting in the car for like five, six weeks since we got back to Tasmania. We just have not had the chance to like actually do this video. So this is the big reveal. Um, well packed. It was in a box, but the box is literally taking up um, a heap of room in the car because it was a lot bigger than the package. So this is the custom air box. Um, obviously it has factory mountings, so it mounts in the factory position. This is your intake. This is your um, where the intake from the engine goes, MAF sensor, perfect perspex top, uh, which is still got its perspex cover on it and fully sealed. So this is what we're going to fit, guys. Um, absolutely brilliant little air box, well designed. And Psycho Performance have these air boxes and all their other hardware that they build and design on the shelf, ready to go most of the time. So you can ring them and say you want this, this, or this, or you can order online and it's there already. They don't have to make it for you specifically. Their designs are uh, tested. They test on all sorts of vehicles with regards to any issues with codes, etc. So they've got it all covered, guys. So no fear of putting these on and you know having any issues. So um, what we're going to do today is I've sort of got all the tools out that we're going to need to use, and we do have an instruction set. Normally, a paper instruction set comes with the airbox. It did with ours. Unfortunately, with all the rain we had a couple of weeks ago, those papers got wet. So I have it on the iPad and uh, Jeanette's gonna do this job. She's pretty keen. So I'm gonna give her the instructions on what to do and she's gonna go through and do it. So hopefully I've got every, everything she needs to do it. So let's get into it. So guys, that means it's gonna go one or two ways. It'll go really, really well or it'll end in an argument, which means we'll probably scrap this video and David will just do it by himself. So, and you'll never see this. <laughs> we'll see how we go. 
All right, let's get into this. First step is disconnect the negative terminal from the battery. So we're just going to take the main battery earth lead off. So that's just going to loosen that. Somewhere where it's yeah, not touching anything metal. And that's fine like that. What we do is remove the math sensor from the airbox. That just clicks off. I think Dave might have loosened that for me earlier because that was really, really easy. And then we're just going to undo these bolts here. Or Alan, Alan key bolts? Torx bolts. Torx bolts. <laughs> Guys, Jeanette's um, really keen to do this, and I'm really proud of her for having a go. She's doing, she'll do a really good job, I know she will, because she's so determined, but uh, give her a little bit of... Um, Dave's nervous. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. No, I'm not. It's it, She'll be fine. We, I just want to make sure that we uh, do everything perfectly right. So just put this out the way. I'm just um, loosening up the remaining two bolts on the airbox factory airbox because the pump was broken obviously then she will loosen up the clamps on the air intake for the engine so that she can pull that off the airbox lid and also twist it out of the way and we'll put a rag down it to stop any anything getting in that intake Next thing I'm going to do guys is loosen off the clamps on the airbox intake because we just need to pull this off the top and twist it around out of the way. We're just going to cover that over so we don't get any contaminants in there, which would be very bad. Okay, so I'm just going to take this lid off and take the filter out. So you have to retain the airbox lid, and the reason you have to do that is we're going to reuse this. The next thing we're going to do is move the power steering bottle out of the way and that's got a plastic clamp on the back of it. Yeah, so it's got a basically a squeeze clip at the bottom which is quite difficult so I've released that mm. um, a little bit so Jeanette can just slide that thing up out of the way and just pos pop it out of the way. And that's just so you can get to the rear, lower rear mounting bolt. We're going to do the three mounting bolts. So there's one at the front, mm -hmm. one there, and one at the back over there. Okay, so. Yep. Hmm. What do you guys reckon? Put a uh, comment in the <laughs> comments and tell us what you think about the the chick getting on the tools. Nothing about the missus belonging in the kitchen, thank you very much. No, there's plenty of girls who do mechanic stuff. It's just nice to give it a go. This bolt at the back we just changed back to a 13mm spanner because obviously the socket couldn't get in here. So we've got the mounting bolts um, bolted now, those three, and it's just going to slide up and out. The next step for Jeanette to do will be take those, you need to push those steel inserts out of the mounting, the rubber mounting points. Mm -hmm. And then once those steel inserts are out, then we need to push the rubber mounts out because they need to be put into the new airbox. Okay. So we're just using a socket, they're pretty easy to get out, so we're just going to pop those out. 
this is the socket on an extension screwdriver just to push those three inserts out all right so the next step now we've got those three inserts is to push the rubber out now obviously the rubber is a cone shape so you need to just sort of push it from the top so the next step guys is to remove the lid on the airbox we're just going alternately um, they weren't tight but just going alternately because I do know that they uh, they have a, a rubber seal under it okay. as you can see guys it's a lovely sealed airbox fancy filter and it's got this custom made filter which is actually clamped on so uses a clamp to actually hold it on tight and it's um he's also anything that's on the air intake side of the air box has a nice piece of aluminium tape on it so the math sensor and where the air goes air intake from the for the engine goes on our next step is to put the three rubber feet in and the three steel inserts so uh, we're just gonna make that job a little bit easier it's gonna spray a little bit of degreaser on the rubber feet just to give them a bit of lube three steel inserts in as well so they're ready to go so guys the psycho performance airbox comes as a sealed unit pre-fitted with a dash six in hex o-ringed port bunk if you would like your airbox to drain as per factory, this bung can be removed and stored in your vehicle for later use. If you'd like your airbox to be sealed for deeper wading depth, ensure the bung is refitted. So we're going to take that one out because most of the time we're not going through deep water and we're just, it's better to have the ability for any moisture that gets in the airbox, if it should do, to be able to drain out through the one-way valve. Giving this thing a bit of a wash off, I'm just going to pop the evacuator valve back on. So it basically slides straight on, nice and easy. And we're going to pop a new zip tie around it, hold it in place. Our next step is give the MAF sensor a really good clean and install it in back in the airbox, in the new airbox. So install the mass airflow sensor into the new airbox now it's had a good clean Oops. another washer there too do oh yeah I'm stuck to the thing. Right, so I guess I just peel this off. Peel that off and discard. Now, which way round does this go? Uh, the other way. Oh, obviously, so the bolts line up. Yep. I'm guessing. So when. Uh, you do this up, you just um, start both of them and just bring it down bit by bit on each side and get a nice tight seal. Got a gorgeous little parrot wandering around here. <laughs> Green rosella. Green mm -hmm. rosella, is it? I'm not sure. Well, that might be one of those parrots. I don't know. I know. It's very pretty, though. Hello. <laughs> He's come to help. Yeah. So quiet. All right. I'm going to do this up, but then I'm going to get Dave to check the tension because I do have a tendency to over-tighten and then it stresses Dave out that I'm going to strip the bolt. So. Mm, so you can also tell, you see here, 
there's an arrow on the mass airflow sensor and that tells you that the air flows that way which is the correct from the filter through to the engine so this just needs to be snug so that the seal seals Just um, basically cleaned the area in the engine bay where the air box is going to go while we had the opportunity. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the radiator return hose. It needs to run under the new air box just with a different design. It doesn't work this way. So just pull that clip out from the side and this one. Hope we're going to do this without breaking it. Just loosening that off, and pulling it off back so I can twist it. And then we're going to zip tie it to the hose on the power steering pump, power steering bottles. So move that completely out of the way until we fit in the new air box. We've got this other bracket on the intercooler intake, so we're just going to use that to pop the radiator hose on and keep it nice and neat and out of the way. And then we're going to zip tie it to that hose on the power steering bottle. Step 17, step 18 of the install of the new air box requires that we um, put a bead of a generous bead of silicon around the rubber seal that goes between the original air box and the original snorkel. Unfortunately our rubber seal's missing. Um, we don't know when it went missing, how long it's been missing, but it's not there. So there's been a gap between our snorkel and our original genuine genuine air box for some time now. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna continue with the install and we'll rectify that issue when we can source that part sometime in the future. Okay, so ready to pop in our new air box. A little bit of a few obstacles to get away, just wiggle it around the hoses and things like that. And we're gonna line up that. lined up with the bolts now. The next we're going to pop in uh, the rear mounting bolts. So that's the tricky one underneath the radiator overflow bottle. Put in the other two mounting bolts and tighten it up just made sure that that was sitting over where the flange is meant to be right now we're going to um, connect the air box to the turbo intake pipe and we've just got a uh, little protective cover on this which i'm going to take off we want this there to be about a 10 mil gap between this pipe and the shroud so we might have to fiddle around a little bit to get it if, in the right place. If, if you have to, all you need to do is put one or two washers underneath the front bolt there. Ah, oh, and those washers actually did come with, the, with the air box kit. So, along with a couple of zip ties that we've used as well. So, everything you need to do the job is in the kit. The only thing you might have to get is some silicon to attach to that intake pipe. But you can see guys how easy it's going to be to check our air filter now. Make sure it's nice and clean. So we're, we're just going to take the, um, the paper off, the, off of the Perspex before we fit it. So we'll just pop all the bolts out and just peel that paper off. Okay, um, pop all those bolts out of, out of the way. Peel the paper off of the air box cover. 
of the of the Perspex airbox cover, and then we're going to refit it back onto the airbox. Alright guys, there it is, top of the airbox, lovely laser cut Psycho Performance logo in it, looks really awesome. So we're just going to slip all the bolts back in now. Okay, so we're nearly done with the new airbox, all we need to do now is just clip this MAF sensor back into place in the front there, that just clips straight down. And then we've got the power steering fluid bottle, which will just has like a plastic clip in it. So I think that just pushes straight down and in. Last thing I'm going to do is connect the negative terminal back onto the battery. Which that one was just sitting on top of all this other stuff. <laughs> We'll just start it, make sure it runs, and we get no no codes or anything, but everything should be sweet. Well, she starts and runs. Let's check the dash. Uh, no codes. On it open, seatbelt not on, and we've got the handbrake on. So. No, no engine light, <laughs> so we're looking good. Awesome. Good job, Dallin. Done well. All right, guys. Well, airbox successfully installed. How'd you go, Bob? Uh, pretty good because we're still here together. I haven't stomped off in a half, so that actually went pretty well. So, yeah, no, she yeah. did a really good job. <laughs> uh, the instruction set was great. It was very clear and concise. Obviously, we have the little issue where that rubber flange is missing between the snorkel and the airbox mm. but that's not psycho's issue it's a problem with obviously the numerous times that our airbox has been removed someone's forgot to put it back in so we'll source that part quickly pull the airbox out and just put that in now when we do that it needs to be um have a really good uh seal of silicon on both surfaces mm. when it gets put on and double checked yeah. to give it a really good seal. So we'll have a good seal of silicon inside the airbox, a good seal of silicon where that flange joins the actual hard plastic of the snorkel intake. And we'll go from there. So yeah, a little bit disappointing that that's bits missing and we couldn't mm. show you that in the video, well, but. I guess it's yeah. pretty lucky that we've actually discovered that uh, before we went go diving through some <laughs> deep creek somewhere. So, yeah. but that's really good. All right, guys, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we will chuck a link to Psycho Performance in the description. And, you know, as always, we really appreciate the people that work with us. And all right, guys, you know the drum. Hit that subscribe button, ding the notification bell, throw us a thumbs up. Any questions, any comments about this, if I can't answer them, I will pass you guys on to Cameron from Psycho Performance. And don't forget to jump on their website, have a look. If you guys are looking at an aftermarket airbox, any full drive pretty much they do them for. So jump on and have a look at their range. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> Stay safe, everyone. Bye.